Hey guys, Danny Johnson here, and uh, today I want to talk to you about the forged rotating assembly that uh, comes in the 0304 Cobras and why it's so important. Yeah, so this is out of our Red Fire Cobra project car that we're doing. If you haven't seen the videos, uh, go ahead and watch those. They're pretty good. We're tearing the whole engine down and rebuilding it. And uh, so I put a few of the main components out to kind of talk about them and show why they're so special. So the main thing that makes the Terminator's engine so strong is that it has a forged rotating assembly and it's so powerful because it has on top of it a Eaton supercharger from the factory. So uh, this was for the 2003-2004 SVT Cobras and um, around that time the, car, the Cobra was making about 300 horsepower, 320 horsepower. So uh, with this setup the cars easily made an underrated 390 horsepower. They're doing about 360 to 380 at the wheels, so uh, you're really looking at a 420 horsepower engine. And uh, the way Ford did that so well is through a forged rotating assembly. So uh, the 0304 Cobra starts out with a forged 8 bolt crank. So what that means is where the flywheel attaches, there's uh, it has 8 bolts, which is uh, two more than the standard six bolt crank that was found on most of the other two valve uh, cars. And um, that crankshaft actually comes from a company called Kellogg. So it's a forged crankshaft. It's not uh, the cast ones like uh, most of the other two valves and other Mustangs had. Uh, so being forged, it uh, easily handles about 1200 horsepower. And so when they were developing the Cobra's engine uh, for 03 and 04, the biggest problem they had was they started throwing connecting rods out the side of the block on the engine dynos. So uh, they ran out of time. They couldn't uh, produce a connecting rod in time for the Cobra to come out for 03 and 04. So uh, John Coletti actually turned to a performance company called Manly, and uh, they were able to co-produce this connecting rod. It's the H-beam rod and as you see it has Manley's name on there as well as the SVT. So that's a very important uh, thing there. It's not too common to see another aftermarket brand stamped on here along with Ford. And uh, Ford's connecting rods were six dollars a piece and this upped the price to fifty six dollars per rod. Uh, these forged connecting rods also came with ARP hardware, uh, so it had some good fasteners on there. And the pistons were all forged aluminum from a company called Zollner. So a lot of people say that this is the weak link of all the forged components, and uh, that's probably true. However, a lot of the uh, problems you have with engines uh, given out on these cars is more has to do with the fuel with the car leaning out or not running the right octane so the pistons what takes uh, most of the hit and a lot of times you'll see chunks missing out of the top or as in our other one you'll see a, the pistons melted completely so uh, anyway the forged connecting rods on these cars can they're rated around six to seven hundred horsepower but they've held the uh, up to a thousand and uh, a six to seven hundred ho wheel horsepower Cobra is just a walk in the park. They'll hold that power all day as long as uh, you're feeding it correctly with not too much ignition timing and using the right fuel. So anyway, this is what uh, the forged connecting rod looks like. And if you ever see, I have one too, but I don't have one here. The stock rod is a puny little, looks like a toothpick compared to this. And so that's the main difference uh, between uh, the naturally aspirated Cobras and even the two-valve Mustangs. It's uh, where they've melted the, the metal down into a molten liquid and poured it into a casting. So they're casted cranks and casted connecting rods where these are forged metal where they've basically taken one solid piece of metal and put it through a machine to, to uh, form it. And so it's stronger as one piece. So that's kind of the difference between these forged crank, forged connecting rods and pistons compared to a cast one. 
All right, uh, one of the other things that's uh, specific to the Terminator, what they also used on the Mach 1, were these dual overhead cam cylinder heads. And so, different than the two valve engines, instead of having one camshaft that operates both the intake and exhaust valves, the dual overhead cam motor has one camshaft operating the intake valves and one camshaft operating the exhaust valves. And I'll flip this up and show you why that's so important. Be really careful not to drop it. But you can see how wide these cylinder heads are to accommodate this. And you can see the uh, bigger opening valves here for the intake and the smaller ones for the exhaust valve. So a regular two valve engine looks more like this, has an intake, one intake valve, and one exhaust valve. So this one has four, there, this is why it's called a four valve engine. It has four total valves per cylinder, two intake and two exhaust. And what's the main difference? Why would you want four valves instead of just two bigger ones? Well, the way that these operate is as the valve comes out, the air is going around this surface area around the valve. Okay, So you're actually getting a lot more flow because there's a lot more surface area on four valves than just if you were to calculate the surface area of two valves even if they were a little bigger. So uh, these cylinder heads are something special and uh, I'll probably do another video on their revisions. There were a few revisions, 03, uh, had a certain casting number which is on the side and then 04 they were updated to nine threads on the spark plugs instead of four and then after the Cobra was produced in 2005 they came out with a final revision or the DC casting which uh, was also found on the Lincoln aviators so anyhow these are the three main components that make the, the Cobra so strong and then of course the supercharger on top which is feeding it plenty of air but I uh, just wanted to show you what these components look like so as you may know the Cobras come with an iron block where previous Cobras had an aluminum block uh, I believe it was 96 to 99 they had the Texid aluminum block which was made in Italy by the same company Ferrari uses and it was a tanked and heat treated block which was very strong and then uh, for 2001 they had the WAP block and WAP meaning the Windsor assembly plant and so uh, Perhaps Ford didn't trust uh, those aluminum blocks as much anymore since they weren't made uh, So strongly and heat treated so that was probably why they went with with this iron block for the Cobra uh, Something interesting is you only have uh, four bolt mains so you have the bolts coming in the side and then you have two up top on the main caps and then you have another one on the on the side of the block whereas the aluminum ones actually have six and so um, there may be some pros and cons with going from uh, an iron block back to aluminum a lot of Cobra owners like this guy may do in this case uh, he may switch to an aluminum block just because this one may have some machining that needs to be done and and uh, might save some weight it's about I think 80 pounds different to go from iron back to aluminum but uh, the iron blocks in these cars I haven't heard many issues with them other than uh, when <laughs> the uh, pistons pre-ignite or the, you know the fuel pre-ignites and scars the cylinder wall such as so so anyhow, that's a little tidbit on the block. Anyway, thanks for watching, and if you have any other comments or questions, go ahead and drop them in the comments. Thanks, guys.